God, there was something I was going to fucking say. Oh, you know what? Oh, I remember now. I learned the origin story to Alec Jones today. Alec Jones. Alex Jones. You talk about Info the crazy Wars. fucker, Info like Wars, yeah. gonna make the frogs gay. Yes. <laughs> so I did not. All the frogs are gay. Turn the frickin' frogs gay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Dude, that song that is video. amazing. Uh, put so that in the good. comments. Put that song in the comments because that um, makes me happy. If you enjoy Alex Jones, let us know down in the comments below, and we'll probably block you. Yes. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, so it, <laughs> he kind of he was found like he was raised in Texas. <laughs> don't judge me like and, Alex Jones. Just don't tell us why. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. Um, if it's because of all the frogs are gay, just tell us down there. Yeah, that's Absolutely. okay. That, they let us know that. Literally the only reason you can tell us why you like Alex Jones. If you like the frogs are gay, I want to see everything that you've watched on YouTube in the past week. Um. <laughs> What are we gonna do for the first twenty minutes? I don't know. I guess we're gonna, I, I guess we're gonna throw up the uh, the new logo. Can we just have the animation running over and over again? Sure. Why not? There we go. This is what you guys are gonna see for the first twenty minutes. Unfortunately, video cut out halfway through, so uh, you know we'll uh, enjoy Theodore. Yeah. In the logo. And the, the Theodore. The logo. Please, Pedro, Pedro, and Pedro. Please don't. Why do we have three Pedros? Please don't. Because us. you could thank him for that. Don't be upset with us. Just, just enjoy the Lego. Apparently, this is, <laughs> apparently this has been long enough. It's now our intro. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Damn it. Come on, clank, clank, to the beginning. Clank, clank. clank. <laughs> Hello, That's what you get. and welcome to Strange Happy Hour, the weekly tech and video gaming news podcast. I am one of your hosts, Brent Jesterhead Metcalf, along with to my left the Dick Spatcher, <laughs> <laughs> Mark Plover, and on the right. Quick, quick, be quick. I don't know. Oh, ah, handsome you, John, you missed your opportunity. Yep, you had the opportunity. You left it alone. Uh, of I course, know. we come Sorry. to you. That sprung on you. <laughs> fucking children. What? Just children. We come to you every week to discuss with you the various things that we find important. <laughs> but before we get there, we have to discuss our special guest for the week, which is a nice Bacardi mojito so we kind of missed the entire irish you know st patty's day the, I the holiday a damn thing. yeah that kind of thing <laughs> i mean obviously he's very irish this is green ish uh we could not come to a consensus on the actual thing because john won't drink green dye yeah. really? so Wait, here what? we really? are is that the reason i have a thing for intestinal discomfort oh, God. Okay, we, um, we could have had it ourselves and just sort of mixed it in i mean like, you can go green. get it right now don't bother me. so mojito in case you don't know is Mint muddled That's at the true. bottom of a glass with a little bit of sugar. And then, of course, you have your clear yeah, rum, no, always no. clear rum, never the spiced, yep. uh, along with some lime juice uh, and a little bit of club soda. It is very easy to make. It's very refreshing oh, it is. when done well. And it is very hot in this room, so it's the <laughs> best compliment we could have at the moment. Yes. <laughs> uh, also, it's actually been pretty warm the past few days. It has been. And today, this morning was a little chilly. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. It was, it was refreshingly chilly. I felt great. I was very happy about it. Not while I was in bed. But you know, the weather's not really all that important. But what is? The, the important, important shit. shit. Oh, look at that. You guys had that synchronized head turn. It was so good. <laughs> Going to the dick smacker first. That was totally just... Going. <laughs> There's something about ray tracing. I don't know. Talk to us. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> everyone uh, has heard, you know seen anyway the RTX cards that NVIDIA has been putting out for a little while. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, RTX specifically Rooster is... Rooster Teeth Expo. Yeah, exactly. Um, RTX specifically, anyway, were uh, purpose-built cards with purpose-built hardware for ray tracing because ray tracing up to this time has always been something that's done in a hackish fashion. It's not something that the GPUs are designed to do, so they don't do it very well, so they have to downscale it drastically to be able to make it performant. So RTX was supposed to be able to give them designated processing units to be able to handle that. And then Crytek steps onto the yeah. you know <laughs> playing field and says, oh, we didn't realize this was that big of an issue. Here. <laughs> the new version of Crytek engine or uh, the, the the Crytek engine features fully rendering um live ray tracing on standard graphics cards albeit not as high as a frame rate of course because you have dedicated hardware for it but still at 4k 30 frames a second to get all of the benefits of rtx yeah i think we're okay that's, that's wonderful. a mic drop seriously but seriously Crytek. 
Where have you been with this? <laughs> like, has the hardware not been good enough? I don't get it. Did you just not identify this as a problem? I, I My bad. Know. We were putting that in our back pocket just in case someone was complaining and we just dropped it. There. Yeah. I mean, happy. now, it, okay, so it, it is in the early developmental stages at this point. Nobody's, been, nobody's going to be able to implement it yet into a game because they're still trying to fine-tune it, tweak it, and all that stuff. But they have a live working video of a real-time render. They did it 4K30. I like to think there's a guy named Fred in the back who's just like <laughs> working on this an entire time and then just kind of put it in a folder somewhere and was like, well, one day we may need it. And someone said ray tracing is like, huh, I got something for that. And they're like, wait, you've had the solution this entire time? I totally forgot to turn it on. My bad. <laughs> oh, good call. Um, no, but uh, it, it's just amazing that yeah, I thought it, you were me. it's just amazing to me that, that it took them this long to sort of be like, oh, here, here you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, we have this technology. We can easily make this happen it's just, you know, on existing hardware, too, you know, so everybody can have it. Who's their parent company? Do, do they have a parent company? I could have sworn they've been going up and down through some crazy financial um, turmoil because they also okay. developed Crisis 3. Um, See, I thought well, that so, sounded familiar, yeah. I mean, cr remember, Crisis for them has always been sort the of back the... back burner. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's always been sort of their secondary product anyway, just to show off what the engine can do, because Crytek Engine's done a lot of great things over the years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I remember them... Sp I, th I could have sworn there's a story about them going bankrupt at some point in time, or nearing bankruptcy for some reason that or was, another. That was the I, engine I that pushed the PS3 to its limits, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, the Cry Cryo uh, Engine is definitely one that made it scream which is weird because the ps3 is f like if you look at straight processing power far superior to a 360 it's just that the cell processors operate in such an odd funky way that most developers can figure it out they have um no parent company and uh i type even something remotely close to bankruptcy and nothing shows up okay well maybe i'll have to do my research and see if i can find yeah. something for next year I, I mean maybe they were struggling at one point because maybe crisis was tanking you know that kind of thing because crytek as far as i know is a freeware engine isn't it I don't know. <laughs> I do not know. That's like a question I don't have the answer to. Hmm. I know about it, but it, it's impressive to me that they that, that that's that's what they decided to do oh, to man. to say, hey, by the way, you know, like here's 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 this giant mic drop on you know all this expensive hardware that Nvidia has decided to come out with you know in the last yeah year you yeah. know like did you miss me <laughs> yeah exactly well that sounds wonderful but we, there, you know, speaking of things that oh, you know people okay, people. <laughs> Speaking of things that people will miss, <laughs> Apple's going to be missing $31 million <laughs> thanks to a lost lawsuit with Qualcomm. I'm pretty sure they pissed that in their gold spoiler. <laughs> I was about to say, what does that cost <laughs> Seriously, it's, it's what is that, like 0.3 or 3% for them probably? You like, say 3%? 3%. No, more like 0.03%. They have $1 billion sitting in the bank right now. Liquid assets. Or, I'm sorry, trillion. Wow. Wow. Way below that. Never mind. Yeah. I'm sorry. My number's backwards. Sounds <laughs> like billion? They just made that right now. This guy's good at math. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever. BT, who cares? Um, no. Um, Trump does. <laughs> That's why but, he lies about uh, it all the time. Qualcomm, anyway, uh, U.S. jury found them uh, guilty of um, copyright infringement on several counts, uh, backing all the, way go, uh, all the way back to the iPhone 7. Um, now, only some of the iPhone sevens after like apparently a refresh or something like that, um, that or an updated, I guess, hardware section that they did midway through the SKUs, um, and then all the iPhone eights and all the iPhone tens. What was the claim? Yeah. Like, what were they infringing upon? Um, some piece of hardware that they're using uh, for wireless tech, I think. <laughs> Turns out it's just the frame of the phone. <laughs> You're like, oh. wait, what? This button is well, no, no, too no. close to my button. Well, no, so here's here's the thing. Um, so Qualcomm and Apple have had sort of a distraught history over the last five years. Okay. Um, it started with uh, Apple apparently making, a, according to Qualcomm, making a false claim about some bad business practices that, anyway that, that Qualcomm was making that got them, in, in, uh, got them under a full federal investigation. Mm. <clears throat> so... Um, Qualcomm, anyway, out of the goodness of them before that, was giving Apple rebates back on some of the profit that they made because Qualcomm was making money hand over fist. Because it was of ridiculous. Apple. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Between Apple, Samsung, and literally every wire, uh, Android yeah. phone ma manufacturer yeah. out there, okay. Qualcomm is the, the leader, you know, as far as any kind of chip manufacturing and processor manufacturing that's available. You know, and honestly, they're they're really... Uh, oh, antitrust investigation specifically. There that's what go. it was. Um, but, you know, like Qualcomm has ha kind of had a rough history since then. So Qualcomm stopped the rebates. So then Apple fired back with 
something I don't remember now. It was another. It was another um, <laughs> dick pics. <laughs> oh no, they stopped using Qualcomm chips. Oh wow! All so right. they stopped using Qualcomm chips in general and switched companies. Um, well, now Apple is developing their own chips. I remember seeing that yeah. for several things, whether it's wireless or I think you know they have the, they, they have the A chips. You know, and they've been yeah. running the A chips for a while now. That's why I saw it. Um, but the other issue is on the other end, Qualcomm apparently owns very general patents for a lot of general things that most smartphones use. Interesting. So they're just going to sue everybody to into oblivion. be able to be functional. What's that? They're just going to sue everybody to oblivion. Exactly. So the problem, yeah. <clears throat> the problem is or that pay Qual- for those rights. You so, have to pay Qual- Qualcomm. Right. Well, so that's the problem is that Qualcomm is very quickly becoming a, basically a, a patent holdings company. Yeah. Yes, they still. It's dying. They still make products. Yes, they still sell processors to to Android phone manufacturers. But the idea is, if you decide to go on your own and make your own, well, Qualcomm can own a stake in that unless you go specifically out of your way to make it a f- more functional anyway in a different manner. Interesting. Well, I mean, Apple was doing that with their charge ports, too, because they didn't want to pay for whoever made the USB-C or whoever made the micro. Well, yeah, at the time it was micro, yeah. And then... Um, and now they're coming back into the fold. I, I, I think that Apple's lawyers would probably put a run-up their mo- for their money on the pharmaceutical companies, just mm-hmm. as much as they're in the news. Oh, the lawsuits, yeah, I agree. Uh, between them and Samsung and now Qualcomm, and then, I mean, even now <clears> the, the uh, FaceTime incident. I mean, it, they're pretty much in... The, they're like... They're not Trump level yet, but, but they're, they're con- getting there. I'm constantly <laughs> in litigation, just all the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, but uh, I, I really don't see. I don't see people wanting to work with Qualcomm much if this continues. That uh, that company. I understand them going after Apple if they did invite, and, and apparently they did violate, you know, or they yeah. did violate a, pa- a patent infringement or a, commit a, a patent infringement. But is it a big deal? Because it, I mean, again, this is only thirty-one million dollars. This is something that um, they're pr- they, again they probably pay on a regular bill basis for electricity in the I, right. giant mansion. Well, no, no, no. but it, it, it's more of them making another shot across the bow at another big company. The precedent is a little bit I, scary, though. How many how many big companies have they shot across the bow at though? Because Apple is seemingly the only one that we're talking about right now. Well, last I, last one I remember maybe was Samsung. Okay. Like this is not the first time loss. Uh, well, I mean, if they want to take the shots, they're gonna have to suffer those repercussions too. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, but but realistically, though, on the other hand, they're also the best manufacturer of smartphone processors. Well, Qualcomm better be careful because a lot of times when this starts happening, things start becoming saying, "Well, this is for the good of all industries." I mean, this kind of like this is too general. You need to be more specific. Right. And there, they're gonna lose all their footing, and that uh, patent holding company that you're talking about will fall apart very quickly. Oh yeah. Well, the hard part is they already have the patents, so the problem is those patents can't go anywhere. They they already exist. There's there's precedents that sit behind them. Unless a judge states that those patents are too general. Right, and that precedence would have to be set in court somewhere. And Apple obviously didn't make it that far to set it. And, and Did um, they settle, or was that mm-mm. ordered? U.S. jury finds them. Oh, man. So, yeah, they were... Yeah. By the like, like, Apple fought it to the end. Like, they didn't settle, it, like, beforehand. I mean, I imagine Apple's lawyers are sitting there like, yeah, we should be fine. I don't understand what the heck they're, they're trying to go on about. Yeah. But, you know. It sounds to me like it was quite a firestorm. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the, the spokesperson for Apple was. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't pick up on that. <laughs> I, it took me a second. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the Apple Isn't spokesperson so could definitely convey that they were not happy about it. Speaking of Firestorm. <laughs> Speaking of Firestorm. Battlefield 5's Firestorm BR is finally launching on March 25th. Oh my God, it's finally happening. It has been so long. EA Dice. What have you been doing? <laughs> uh, they've, they've basically just wasted a bunch of money. Do you think anybody's going to notice? <laughs> That's my question. No, it's too Hardcore long, players only. too late. <clears throat> it's just... Uh, and tied behind a wrong. paywall. I am... Because <sighs> you have to buy Battlefield Five in order to play the BR. Oh, not only that, but no one's talking about Battlefield Five. <laughs> <laughs> no one's talking about Battlefield Five anymore. No. no. So uh, it, it's not getting any, like, you know... Crazy. They're not advertising it, marketing it like they should be, yeah. in my opinion. So no. I feel like it's a little too late. Well, I, I mean, they're not going to advertise it like they did the game, just because it's yeah, a small not. feature of a game that yeah. nobody wanted to play. It, that they that if you didn't already buy to play, you're not going to buy it to play it later. What is on that battle royale that differentiates it from Black Ops Four or, I mean, e- even Player Underground? So. Okay, from Black Ops Four. A v and the logo. From from Black Ops Four, not terribly much, but 
you do have extra things in the sandbox. You can drive tanks, right? Right. Oh, tank. You can drive tanks, fly helicopters. Um, you can call in airstrikes. Actually, you because, can fly in helicopters. My favorite, one of my favorite scenes is like that first that first clip of the two squads running the, in the separate houses in that video, and then like they're just shooting gunfire from the right house, and the left house just shoots a flare, <laughs> and that's it. You see it hit the house, and it just think falls to the ground. And then an airstrike comes in and demolishes <laughs> it. Um, so they, they have the building stuff where it falls apart. Oh, That's yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the normal, destructibility. Yeah, the normal yeah, yeah. frostbite stuff's all there, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Houses are fully destructible, just like they always have been. I know that, that uh, Battlefield 4 had an issue with that with uh, crashing servers because it just couldn't handle it. Yeah, it was a new frostbite engine anyway, and the servers didn't know how to handle it. Um, but the, was it Frostbite 4 that came out for Battlefield 1? improved upon that drastically like it like fixed a lot of those problems so battlefield 5 just carried so. an improvement on that because if they're gonna if they're gonna make it at all they're gonna need everything to be up mm-hmm. and tight no. man brent yeah that three no huh? two uh, like, this is my this is my second one. i can think of one way they could advertise it fine i'll, I'll speed up <laughs> john talk to us about apex legends apex legends is what Battlefield 5 isn't. So, <laughs> <laughs> and that is successful. You're, you're not wrong. I was about to say, you're not wrong on many levels. <laughs> but they did what they didn't do with Battlefield 5, and that is crank out the marketing. They spent $1 million just on Ninja alone. Mm-hmm. Was his name Tyler Blevins? Yes. Dude, that guy, oh my. Uh, for one tweet and what, 12 days worth of playing Apex Legends. I think they uh, basically. I think they broke it down into uh, what it was worth, and for the advertisement that he did for a ha- for one commercial for five hundred thousand people, which is basically the equivalent of what he what he did. They uh, projected what he did over the amount of days for for his usual viewers and how long he had their attention and everything else. Right, seventeen thousand dollars for the level of viewers that he had for a thirty second commercial, and he played for hours. Jeez, yeah, well. On top of a tweet, which obviously got millions of people's eyesights on top of it. So, that, you know, good on them. EA did well on the, the marketing team freaking killed it. I mean, also, it's a tight game. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, it, it also helped that it was a good game. And if you would have had uh, Ninja Sick playing plan, a dude. shit game, I think a lot of people would probably have a lost respect for Ninja. So it's good on him that he actually uh, made a good advertisement choice. The um, What's impressive, too, is oh, upcoming here soon, they're going to have their first season. Uh, with a new character. Oh, yeah. And By the time this is released, it'll be out. Yeah. This is the first season with the <clears throat> Battle Pass. Um, oh, okay. It's going to be very interesting to see how Apex Legends spans awesome. out because I think they're they're already doing better, personally, than Black Ops 4. Yep. Though, I mean, they have made their money because you had a buy-in for Black Ops 4 yeah. on top of other purchases that you would make. So don't get me wrong, Activision made their money off of this game. They're happy right now. But uh, as in terms of service, I don't know if they're going to continue past. Apex Legends, though, to me, has the ability to hurt Fortnite considerably because it's in that tra- like that game in Fortnite is in a transitional phase between battle royale games for kids like your brother's age for mm-hmm. instance like going from your little brother to do you mind me saying their names no it's fine okay so you have uh from your little brother to Evan B Scotch and Dots B Scotch and Dots yeah right right uh, our little friend on uh, <clears throat> Twitter that likes to can, do can naked get, <laughs> just for, noodle for, runs for them can we get numerical ages uh, so 12 and 21. 21. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you have like your adolescent going into your like adult phase, like somewhere right. in there you're going to okay. have the, you know, I, people are already still play Fortnite. So don't yeah. get me wrong. There's not a cutoff and you are not a child for playing Fortnite, but you are, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, they are, uh, their advertisement scheme, uh, really paid off for them. And I think that out of all the sh- that, e- sorry, all the stuff that EA has done, my bad child friend, I know, um, I think this was one of the better decisions over the years yeah. and the way that they have done the season pass, the expectations, uh, the transparency with everything, and on top of their marketing has been on point. And I truly yeah. think that they could overtake Fortnite in years to come, but we'll find out. I, do I think, think people are getting sick of it, to be honest. But I think this is really interesting because people said the same thing about Minecraft for years, mm-hmm. like that Minecraft was going to falter. Minecraft still sells ridiculous amounts and today. People oh, stream the crap out and of it is still one of the highest streamed games out there. I like think, I mean to be honest, like when I say kill for it, I don't think it's gonna die. No, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You're it, talking about overtaking just, as the leader. It's just gonna take another chunk out of what was there. So yeah. it's gonna be one of those staples, I think, that doesn't really go away like Fortnite, but it is going to start help differentiating right. people who like streaming and who like to watch streams. Right. It's uh, so for me, 
I mean, Apex Legends, just like Fortnite, to me, is going to be another fad. Yeah. It's yeah. eventually going to come and go, you know, that kind of thing. Minecraft, to me, has always been an interesting one, <clears throat> just because it is much less of a fad in the sense that it it just seems to be a solid platform for everybody to play at any time. Mm -hmm. But it kills me. Portal Knights, <clears throat> is a, to me, but, is a better Minecraft. But to, to me, Apex will eventually outshadow Fortnite, and I see Fortnite maybe dying from this, because I think, <clears throat> in my opinion... Um, Apex has actually done well enough on their own just by developing a, gr a great game. Yeah. Like, that appeared out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. I think that alone is going to make it a decent platform. Yeah, that shadow drop, by the way, which everybody was always screaming, will never work, will never work, and it's going to hurt them, that worked for them tremendously. It, it only worked, though, because it was free to play. Like, it was, yeah, because the, it was free right, to play, right, but yeah. also it was a good game yes, from no, the get-go. I, I agree well, that. But that's what worked for Fortnite, the, too. The yeah. argument of shadow drops not working is specifically with like consoles or games that cost money, because you need to ramp up the advertising for people to be willing to put out cash. Right. Dude, one thing, the rumors coming out for PAX East with Borderlands, Three? Yeah. Oh my God! Can you imagine? Like <laughs> someone wrote, I don't remember where I read this. It had, it was probably IGN, but they were like, "You, you, this is free, but you can call it Border Royale." <laughs> <laughs> um, I do think that Fortnite's got a lot more fight in it than you're giving it credit for. Mm -hmm. I definitely think that Apex has the capability of doing so, but right now they they've done they've got a great foundation and they're copying the <laughs> battle pass. They have to do something to kind of kick the rest of the Fortnite players over, and I don't know what they're going to do at this point. In it's order really going to gonna be so. an age range thing and the interest yeah. level of that I age mean, group. So it's going to be like, you know, you're going into 18, you're going to start transitioning into other games. I mean, maybe, but you also have to think about the fact that there are tons of people our age who are starting to have kids who are looking for something they can play around them, and so they're going to move away from something like Apex into something like Fortnite because yeah. it's easier for them to pick up around their kid. Okay. Um, we totally overshadowed it, and I did it for the transition. But I do want to come back to you. Are you excited at all for Firestorm? Like, are you going to pick it up and play it? You have well, a copy I, of five. One hundred percent, I'll yeah. play it. I mean, I, I, there's nothing about me that says that I won't play it. How long is going to be a whole other yeah. okay. debacle? You I'll know? be really interested to hear about that. We can include a little segment in last I, call every I, week. Also, the things that differentiate it, like the tank runs and stuff like yeah. that. I want to see how that actually holds up to the the interest level between Black Ops and Battlefield, because those, to me, are the ones that really compete against each other, even though you do have Apex Legends. Yeah. Uh, player un, uh, player Unknown. Um, Call, Call of Duty and, Battle, and or, Battlefield have always clashed with each other over trying to get the most players. Uh, but, I mean, it is possible for it to redeem itself. We have seen other games redeem themselves, I, such as... Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah, I lined with no, the no, perfect no, 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 segue. No, go for it. No, it's guy. No Thank you. Man, I was like, hold on. Did we switch? No, no. So, yeah, No Man's Sky uh, is one of those games that has come from the ashes. People were mad, um, and they just couldn't get past the fact that, you know, it was a false advertisement scheme. Now this guy is giving away so much. I don't know. He, there's no in-game purchases. For No Man's Sky. Nope. So how are they making money for all of these free... Is it literally just goodwill? And the hope is that more people will purchase the game. Yeah. Because they haven't dropped the price. That is that is their, their their scheme right now is that they're adding more content, but keeping the price the same. But hoping more and more people join. Exactly. Uh, well, they had re recently allowed... Scheme's a bad word for it. Plan. I know. I, <laughs> I, I realized it when I said it, but I stuck with plan. it. Plan. There's a plan for three updates, one of which we know is going to be... is called Beyond. And it's a multiplayer perspective. It's not, again, no in-game purchases or anything like that or a battle royale but it still allow people to play with each other hmm. uh there hasn't been a whole lot talked about it yet yeah. but to have th something like that that is super major because it's what people have always wanted with no man's yep. sky it was one of the things that in the beginning was said was going to happen which also kind of makes me think that he's doing this to avoid possible litigation issues yeah that's a, that's a possibility though I but I, I find that less likely than yeah you know him doing it because it's his love of life, and he wants to make this work. Yeah. I um, can't remember his name for the sake of me right now. And I, I forgot it because you asked no. me, so. Oh, I bet I did. <laughs> I read it right before the podcast. I was like, I won't forget this. Boop. <laughs> My brain went, Tom Happ, and that's a different indie developer. It has nothing to do with No Man's Sky. <laughs> so there you go. But uh, I mean, I'm super excited for it, uh, to hear what it does. I never got into the No Man's Sky level. You no agreed. Um, I... We have it at the house, and so think, with, with these updates, I, I constantly 
play around with you the still, idea. You still of, mess with it ever? I, I have watched Brianna mess with it, and I've played toyed with the idea of jumping in myself just to see what it is because it is such a different game than when it released. You know why not? I mean, between I think Brian bought it too, and it would be interesting to see if you guys actually played around with it to see if uh, it would be something more the along the lines Ooh, of what play you want. Around with it. I'll play around with Brian. I have no problem. I bet you do. Oh, play around. With it. <laughs> I'm with you 100. I am very excited to see what is in store. Um, I had like a witty retort. You know what else came back from the go. dead? There you go. That works. I'm with you up top. This is how we run the podcast, <laughs> yeah. just from the skin of our damn teeth. The, <laughs> the uh, uh, new game coming out from the creators of Left 4 Dead and Evolve. Uh, Turtle Rock Studios is developing a game called Blood. I'm oh, sorry. Back for Back for Blood. Back for Blood. You said B for B is all I can think of in my brain. Is <laughs> blood to the future. The, blood uh, to the future. <laughs> blood to the yeah. Back for blood, blood to the future. <laughs> Back for blood to the future. The uh there's been uh it is not gonna be a battle royale, it was specifically said, which it interests me because this game, Left for Dead, was like to me, was the start of the zombie like revolution mm-hmm. of gaming. Mm-hmm. It did everything right. Like my favorite saying, and I still say it every now and then is Molotov over here. <laughs> I'll be going around the house and just saying it. It's fun. <laughs> to uh, himself, no one's there. It's really, really weird. weird. Oh, yeah. When I drive my van, I'll like, Molotov over here. <laughs> People are looking at him. He's, 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 he's got his going window down, and somebody else is like, what? <laughs> um, <laughs> no. I, I don't know why that stuck with me. Me and Brian used <laughs> yeah. to say to each other in the house. It's a oh. spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead. So it's the yeah. same style We don't of know game. if it's going to be a sequel or not. So they said spiritual successor. So they're basically okay. saying it's going to have the same like groundwork. Because I literally read that they don't know if it's going to be a sequel or not. No, no, it won't be. As far as I know, it's not a sequel. They okay. said it's going to take the gameplay of that franchise. I found it very franchise. interesting that they follow the same name pattern. Yeah. Uh, left for dead. Back, back for blood. blood. They said uh, they tweeted out about it that this is going to be their follow up to the Left for Dead franchise. Okay. So, cool. which is I, exciting. Well, which is great because it's, after I saw Evolve and it completely tanked, and I totally understand why. I was hoping they go back to their roots. They got ten years of experience of this game. They, <laughs> what? It's a back for blood. <laughs> What you said go back to the roots. You said back, back to the roots, back, back, back for blood. Yeah, that's right. Got to get back to that uh, good old gore. Uh, they have 10 years of experience uh, in dealing with these games, and they had two very successful games with uh, Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2. Mm-hmm. Um, Played I, the crap out of them. Dude, it, the witches I still give me nightmares. super excited about this. <sighs> no, just cry. You hear crying, the yeah. entire room <laughs> goes quiet. <laughs> like, if you have yeah, anybody no, no, you're watching like, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> stop moving! <laughs> Where is she? The uh, yeah, sorry about the f bomb. The uh, <laughs> well, that's legitimately what happened. No, Everybody seriously, shut up! <laughs> For any of you that have played Left 4 Dead or Left 4 Dead 2, you'll understand what it's like. Just ah, oh. oh, so great. Left 4 Dead 2 was my favorite because you could actually play as the uh, as the zombies online. Oh, nice. It looks fantastic. It I'm is. Very excited. I, I'm gonna. I, I, there's no beta out yet. Uh, there. They said to check out the FAQ for right now for more information. But uh, there's not much, so don't get you know don't get your panties in a wad. It's on the way, which is cool. E3 is right check around it out. the yeah, corner. Say, we'll, we'll let, us know, let us know in the comments below how uh, yeah, you feel about it. I have. A, He's I have always gets this wrong. It's to the right above John. There's bombs dropping the everywhere between packs. E3. I think we're gonna it's see a whole great. lot of stuff. It's gonna Edit be on PS4, Xbox, and there. PC. Erase whatever we put in there. Screenshot it. Are you done? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be on I'm Xbox, gonna, PC, and PS4. I'm talking about it. Next one, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, where the zombies fall, the devils may rise. Uh, ooh, good one. Devil May Cry has apparently some weird censorship on PS4. I witnessed this myself over the weekend when I beat the game. That's right. Beat the game started on Friday and beat it by Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Yeah. Uh, I was pretty excited about that. Um there are certain sequences that involve some back end nudity for female characters. A little butthole. On the PC and Xbox okay. One versions of the game, you can clearly see said crack. On the PS4, you cannot. I have a crazy theory as to why that nobody has apparently dive, dove into because I have not heard an explanation. Capcom has not given an explanation. There's no talk about patching it out. Nothing. Do you think it's just literally a, like what they programmed it for and someone just randomly did it messing around and left it there? No, I think it's the way the Japanese version was. And so when uh. it was moving west, because 360 and PC games sell decently over there. 360 is terrible over there. Or, I'm sorry, Xbox One. But um, PC does decently over there. They're not really concerned when it comes to these types of franchises. They're going to be selling on PlayStation. So for that culture, they censored it and <laughs> then brought it over here for the other generate other 
Was the choose. censorship really that big? It's big. literally like a, there's a, a vehicle that has a light, and the light shine hides. Sad crap. It's it's really not. If you had played the game on PS4 and no one ever told you, you would never notice the difference. Yeah. Oh, wow. uh, this I've is, never seen Hunter talk about it. I was like, <clears throat> this is clearly one of those circumstances that they were being creative and interesting. And I just thought it was. It, it's going to lead into a topic later. I probably could have ended this with it now that I think about it. But I digress. Uh, it's still interesting nonetheless. <laughs> uh, there may be a patch soon. If not, on Xbox One, enjoy your lady booty. Uh, move, <laughs> <Your> lady booty. <laughs> moving on to Switch. Fortnite. So this story is fascinating to me because there's this whole hullabaloo about how PlayStation will not play well with anybody else when this it comes to crossplay. Topic. So the crossplay debacle ended roughly when PlayStation said we'll put some games in there, Fortnite being included. So we thought. This past week, the uh, Epic patched the uh, Switch Fortnite. I actually just moved their server pools around, so they only interact now with mobile. They don't interact with PC, Xbox One, or PS4. So all of this hullabaloo of people are like, I want to be able to play Switch while my boyfriend's playing on PS4. We can play together. It's like, well, guess you can't anyway. Nope. <laughs> so I, I... So not only did Sony get the bad rap, yeah. but now they're not going to even be able to benefit off yeah, of it. Whatever. Did they say why? So they never made any mention as to why <laughs> Epic made this change relatively uh, uh, quietly. So, so it is Epic that made it, not Nintendo you, telling them to Correct. Make it. Uh, my crazy theory is the fact that there's probably not nearly as many people playing on Switch as one would assume, so they just moved them to the mobile pool. Because yeah. the mobile pool is going to be the smallest pool. Well, but the mobile pool mixed with PC and PlayStation. And I think and they Xbox. were trying to get so away from that. They've, they've separated them now into two I separate mean, pools. Uh, the only thing I can think of is maybe control schemes. Yeah. They're similar. Playing on Switch might be more difficult than playing with a full size controller. Eh, not really, because I could literally take my uh, Type A controller and literally play yeah. like an Xbox. So or network latency. That's so network one. latency the network, was the because one because the, the network me. card is traditionally not been great, you know, or from reviews what I've seen yeah. of the Switch. So here I thought it was my internet. <clears throat> <laughs> Regardless, it's probably both. If you're playing Fortnite on your Switch, don't expect to play with your buds on uh, PC, PS4, or Xbox One. Moving on to the <laughs> final topic of the show. Speaking of Nintendo, uh, it appears that there has been an unknown hidden NES game found and then virtually restored by some hobbyists. So this NES game is called uh, UWC. It is a boxing game that was found in an old cartridge. Um, that was apparently just hanging out in storage somewhere. So these hobbyists decided that they were going to figure out what's on there, basically downloaded the ROM and started messing with it to make it work. So it actually is a full running, brand new NES game. Wow. 30 years after it had been like forgotten about. Wow. They digitized it and finished it. It's really crazy. Um, this is it better than the original one, the boxing game we had? So the new owner of the game is uh, Stefan Reese, a.k.a. Archon 1981. Uh, as much as last week, so he said he had completed it last week, uh, and that he is uh, going to thank the Video Game History Foundation because they helped him complete it. So oh, wow, okay. I thought that was very, very cool. I mean, we often see uh, all these like little stories about People who are finding, you know, the ET in the desert dump and like all these old ancient pieces of history, ancient pieces of video game history. So watching it restored and actually desert available. Dump. I thought it was just a dump. It was a dump in the middle of the Arizona desert. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Where they <laughs> found ET. So I just thought it was really cool. Jeez. Um, you know, let us know what you think about it in the comments above us. Hello. Because this has been the, the important show. He's so focused on where the comments are. He always forgets. It really doesn't matter. They're always going to be where I say they are. Or where I rotate the camera to say, you know, where he points them. Correct. Now he'll never know. Speaking of topic Watch of the show, me. I said it a little too early, but I I'm going to say it now. Hard. It's topic of the show. It's moving on. <laughs> uh, we're going to discuss. He's trying to come up with some sound <laughs> we're, we're cut, we're trying to be all sensual. <laughs> Tots, tots, tots is what I'm saying. Topic of the show. Um, not little children. There is. Can we stop making... calling it tots? I'm so tired of calling it tots and then having sex tots, too. Tots, tots. I always think of tater tots. Is that really what you? Yes, 100. Cool. You know, even though we had an entire. Episode, yes, I'm well aware. I, I am not so disparaged that I hold on to it. Uh, <laughs> so I want to talk about cultural differences in. There are many of them. We celebrity, talk about them all celebrity. Mal malicious isn't the right word. Uh, deviant behavior, right? So Japan's full of it. <laughs> you're not wrong. 
So uh, this week was a very interesting week for Capcom because they released a Yakuza spinoff game called Judgment. Judgment involves uh, the Yakuza games you always control, like someone who's part of the Yakuza gang. This one, you inv- are controlling a police detective who's in a different ver- part of Tokyo, going around, beating up bad guys. The One of the voice actors and physical actors, because they actually do a lot of likenesses with their actors, mm-hmm. uh, was caught with uh, cocaine. Possession of drugs in Japan is not good. You don't like if you if you ever travel to Japan and you're a recreational drug user, don't do it there because they throw the book at you. Uh, the average uh, case uh, for like guilty to not guilty, from my understanding, in Japan is like ninety eight percent almost are found guilty, and the other two are not because by the time you get to court, they're like, yeah, you're guilty because you should not have gotten that far. Wow. In the system. Wow. So this gentleman was caught with cocaine. He has been arrested. Since then, Capcom has pulled the game from all digital storefronts. They have physically pulled the copies. They're no longer shipping them out in Japan at all. Square Enix is uh, the publisher behind Kingdom Hearts. They are rewriting uh, the character Olaf, who's from Frozen, because that voice actor was involved in that. He was originally going to... uh, cover Olaf in Frozen 2. He's being pulled from that. Like, the reaction from all of these large companies is astounding because it's not only brutal, even to their own detriment, but swift. Like, yeah, they don't waste any time. It, at this point, it the game is actually skyrocketed in value because it's hard to find, and it's going to have this version of the voice actor in it compared to whatever new one they released. It's high as $404 right now. Holy cow. It started out at about 80 <clears throat> Okay. So with all of that on the table, I want to discuss how different this is because of the way we treat the same situations here in the United States for our celebrities. If that same person got caught with cocaine in America, Trump would have given him a job. I believe well, that's correct. So drugs drugs here are handled drastically different than they are like in other countries. Specifically 100%. Japan. 100%. So if somebody had had a coke charge here, to be honest, somebody with a decent enough money or decent enough, you know, I guess... They make it go away. Right. It, it just sort of disappears. Don't get me wrong. You make the tabloids for a week. Yeah. And then you go right back to work. Yeah. You know, like, it, it's not that big a deal here. Don't get me wrong. The war on drugs and minimum sentencing laws still exist here in the U.S., so yeah. you should still fall inside that, but a lot of people don't. Yeah. Money. Right. Same thing with college, but... Um, but, I mean, in in Japan, obviously, it's much more strict. Well, and nobody and they they don't take that lightly. To take this into a more broad spectrum look, look at the James Gunn thing. Him coming back for um, Guardians of the Galaxy three. Uh, it's been what uh, eight nine, nine months, months uh, since uh, the racial, I guess comments. I don't know whether jokes or comments. So they were malicious he, jokes, tweets, whatever content. They were meant as jokes. But they okay. were maliciously targeted. I didn't know if he was being like just abhorrently mean. He was be- he was being abhorrently mean eight years ago on Twitter, and that doesn't make it any right or wrong. I just that's no, the context. But it, yeah, context. Context it, it of was, the actual that conversation. Far back. It Correct. Wasn't, yeah. Correct. But now that you know, I mean, people forgave this individual pretty freely. Uh, it seemed like on most news outlets, not everybody was taking it very seriously. They were actually more upset that Disney was actually throwing the hammer at him for something so light. But then we saw the thing with Liam Neeson where he said what he did. Not so many people were okay with that because it was a little more aggravated and a little bit more threatening. Well, yeah. But at the same time, I like I looked at it like, okay, that was a conditional thing. Like, I, There are times where you were going well, to feel immense, tense anger, and it might not be rational. But at the same time, the, it doesn't necessarily mean it's right or wrong. Well, so the, the, I think my I mean, di- my difference is mean it's right. with, with those people that we're talking about. Those are Sorry. conscious mental decisions to make. Those those are conscious. Um, I'm trying to trying to figure out the r- the right way to explain what I mean here. Well, I mean it, it it was a choice that they had made consciously, but I mean we don't know if there was anything else also involved that may have. Been, Made their but, uh, but decision a little bit easier. But for me, that that's more of something—a conscious decision against somebody else. You know, like a, <clears throat> you're talking about race, you're talking about sexual abuse, you're talking about mm-hmm. something. You know, something else. There, we're talking about substances here. Yeah, that is that is merely going to affect you and just you. So I do find, I guess it's not. It, it, we're talking about 
we were talking about context earlier. I think context for J- Japanese history is also kind of interesting to draw in here, where th- opium screwed up parts of Japan for a very long time, which does explain a lot. Now, the country has some weird history when it comes to drug laws in general. Uh, shortly before the World Cup was actually hosted there, shrooms were actually legal. It was one of the few legal drugs you could actually consume. Really? And then How, Americans showed up. And, well, the World <laughs> Cup came, and they people believe that it basically came to pressure from foreign powers or fear of that reaction so they made them illegal and have not made them legal since then interesting they're, it's so they're they're a very bizarre comp- the uh, country the things they even find taboo like uh, t- t- tattoos for instance we obviously don't look at those yeah. the same as they do they look at it as oh you're yakuza you do things that are like gang related or uh, violent or drug related what have you yeah. but we look at it now but I mean, not so far recently in the past as a negative thing um, I mean, we we did at one point of like, oh, you're still, you know, like this. You're trying to be a, you know, a bad kid a bad or boy. whatever, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Because you've got a tattoo. I've got a tattoo. <gasps> I don't have a tattoo. I'm working on it though. Don't I worry. have a tattoo. I'll like, join it, a gang afterwards. I have a tattoo. It's not. Where it's, at. it's not a gang thing. It's because something means something to me. You know. Like, yeah. So like, yeah. but no, yeah. I mean, we're getting a little specific. You well, know. And, and, and but but it is odd that. That's how their culture sees it, though. But it, again, I think this is very interesting because you were talking about tattoos. Like d- historically in Japan for centuries, if you had a tattoo, it's because you were part of the Yakuza. No other reason would you ever have a tattoo. So tattoos carry that context with them even to this day where they see people with tattoos. and They're like, so I figured some Western you were part influence, of a bad influence would come over there, though. Eventually. So part of it is. And that's where the weird. It's they're starting to lighten up more about it, right, but right. it's still got a. Uh, it's still I mean, they're in their transition. For so. for one, they're fairly isolated. Two, I don't think like it, it doesn't matter how much Western culture comes over. There's still going to be things they right. push back on. I mean, J- Japan's always had. This deep, is a deep culture that in... wears openly has cells used panties out of yeah. a vending machine to yeah. put on their head so they can whack off while they do that. Or just sniff them, whatever your preference is. Yeah. But they restrict you from doing substances. Correct. Yes. So here's another great example I wanted to pull up because I happen to find it on Kotaku as well. I'm saying they do weird things okay. that we find like, okay. I, would, I, would not, think I don't think in that, that would, case it would be more okay. I want to know if I, I mean, working in an industry that has, before that has had vending machines, like you would want to think that, is this like going to violate any kind of like? Can you imagine scrubbing world? those shelves? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, case in point, uh, the Japanese media reported that voice actor Ai Takabe, who starred in the comedy slice of life anime Kill Me Baby, was arrested for drug possession. Uh, the, during the like shortly after her arrest, the, her credit her name was erased from the credits. She was dropped by her agency. The video was pulled off of Amazon streaming video. Bandai Namco stopped streaming not only Kill Me Baby but Sweet Blue Flowers, which is a 2009 anime, and a 2011 anime Wandering Sun, in which she voiced those characters in those animes. I mean, you never existed. That's the point: is that if you Holy are crap. caught, you don't only get the repercussions. You don't. Go, like you don't exist anymore. But the thing is, they're also hurting them. Like they're actually hurting company. Like, it's costing this company yeah. a lot of money to not be able to use their IPs to, it, without it, making alterations. So this article right. was written in 2015, and at the time of writing, Takabe hadn't been found guilty of anything yet. She's still awaiting trial. But in Japan, cops don't typically make arrests until they're certain there's a conviction, which may explain the country's astronomically high conviction rate. All You're know, guilty until you're proven innocent. Yeah, I mean, France is kind of like that too. But at the same time. Like uh, looking at it in a comparative perspective to the U.S., Mm -hmm. we are treating this person that used cocaine the same way that we treated. He's an alcoholic, Kevin Spacey, for abusing kids or abusing a fourteen-year-old. Just to be specific, Mm, I don't want to be. I mean, kind of, but not really. Kind of. We they removed movies. They removed his face off of things. No, 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 no. no, But you could still watch House of Cards, though. You could still. Again, it's more along the lines of trying to compare it to the closest thing I can think of. Because who had? I mean, what movie have you ever heard of in America that's been pulled off the shelves for any incident? That's my point. Like that's the cultural difference here that I wanted to discuss. That was the closest thing I can get to. Well, no, no, no. But but again, that's great because that proves the point. Like no matter how close we try to come to it we still don't even compare no and no, no, no. I, f- I mean realistically but that's why i talked these... about the forgiveness factor with liam neeson like or uh, yeah. uh uh james gunn is because we are so much more quickly to forgive and we are so much more ready to say okay you know people do bad things we learn from our mistakes the, and move on we're the wild west over here apparently yeah buddy we, we like it dirty and hot and rough too 
the world was. See, it's it's like you were talking about earlier. When you get on the tabloids, rich people get to get themselves their names out of it because they, you know, they bribe them to say, please stop talking about it for at least a week. I'm done, or whatever. Um, but over there, it's not so much about the tabloids. I don't, and but they do care about their image. Japanese companies like Nintendo care very much about their brand to a point where they would rather sacrifice millions of dollars than have any right. part of their brand. I mean, they, they live and die by those brands. I mean, that's that's pride is something that they have that I think Americans are losing, and that's another I, point. When, but I, the difference is we're quick to make a profit and move on. Yeah. yeah. So if something negative happens, you know what? I'm going to close the company. I'm going to move out, and I'm just going to start something new. Well, and, and I yeah. think that's what you were talking about, image. And image is important, but I think the word is really their substance. Like, what Nintendo stands for is what it stands for. It's not just the name. It's not just the facsimile of it. Nintendo stands by what it means. And so when you're talking about Nintendo, and we talk about the CEO and their upper management taking pay cuts so their employees can stay, when we talk about the fact that they have coffers of money that they choose to keep to themselves, but also lower their mobile transactions so they're not trying to steal money from people who right. can't afford or it. Or don't make them feel like they're hurting people. Like, that to them is incredibly important. And we're seeing the same thing here where we have these companies who are, okay, this is not okay, and we're not only going to show that, we're going to hurt ourselves, put us in a detriment to prove the fact that we believe this. Yeah. Hey, man, when you talk about Germany, like, the culture, like, I, I respect them on so many levels because they do things that I'm, I totally respect. Like, they care very much about their pride, their standings, and their kind of like what we used to care about, uh, you know, like our community culture. Right. Um, oh, and them being so, an island, it? it obviously matters a lot more because uh, I mean, they, they live a lot closer to each other than we do here. So you kind of have to feel it a little bit more. Whereas you can move all the way across the United States if, you know, like that – Catholic priest did. He moved from New Jersey all the way to Arizona or whatever. Yeah. And uh, this guy didn't even know he was living next to a pedophile that had raped multiple children. And then five days later, he was killed, but whatever. Um, it's one of those things like it, it's just events. easier to get away. <laughs> Well, I also think that, I mean, you were talking about it earlier. We, Sorry, we were talking about Todd's earlier. So we, we've talked about it multiple times now. You know, here in the United States, you're right. It is very easy to brush under the rug. You walk out of the spotlight for a few days and you pay a little bit of extra money, whether that's directly to people or that's to charity. And all of a sudden you absolve yourself. I, I wonder if they maybe do that a lot. I wonder if maybe if you're held to this higher standard, if that would stop. I would enjoy that. Maybe. I would enjoy people just being good people because, you know, they want to be good people, but we all know that's not going to happen. Right. No. <laughs> but, I mean, if there's a higher level of accountability to the point where these companies that we know, like here, a great example right now is WB's CEO. And granted, this is this is a little different because I, I think it's not nearly not, as severe. Not everything's going to be the same. Yeah, but this is WB's CEO right now is stepping down because he is caught having an affair with one of the writers of movies that he has been approached. Uh-oh. And so he is... Let this woman, uh, she has produced now two movies under WB's label. Were they successful? Oh. I don't know. I had to go back and look at what the films okay. were. I was about but, to say, if they weren't, oh, buddy. But, I mean, what do you think WB is going to do about this? They're going to go, we don't agree with this. He's left the company. He might and get sued he, by the company. It's possible, but I doubt it. I do, too. Uh, I do feel like they're going to want to sweep it under the rug, but I do think there's going to be a settlement to come out of it because if it didn't make them money and it cost them money, it's going to be pretty easy to... Well, so that right there stems to be the difference between American companies and Japan, Japanese companies. They will do it for the image at the detriment of themselves financially. Yeah. American companies, we all know we're here to make money. That's yeah. the point. I mean, but yeah. but that also comes down to the difference in human culture Yeah. between Japan and us. I mean, Japanese traditionally, if you, I mean, we, we always, you hear people make the joke anyway here in the U.S. anyway about, oh, I have dishonored my family, you know, if you're going to be like, if you're going to go for the racist, racist stereotype. But realistically, that, if you dishonored some, if you dishonored yourself or your family name drastically, your only option was to kill yourself. Seppuku. Yep. Right. But that's the difference, is that it's based on dishonor. It's based on image. It's based on, you know, uh, Having that legacy behind you mm -hmm. here in America, here in here in America, I mean, it, greed runs everything. Yeah. No, it Money is funny runs how greed, even even those people who it, like take Actually, greed as their trophy, still look at legacy as something they care about. I don't want to say kind of funny and ironic. I don't actually want to say greed necessarily. It's just money. It's yeah. the substance of money. It's it's the the intrinsic value of something that That's drives great. it. If your public image is going to detriment your financial income, then you're going to drop whatever's doing that. Okay, Kevin Spacey, you know, has handled this publicly wrong. 
We're going to drop him from future things. However, we're going to keep his previous stuff because we can still make money off that stuff because it was still good content that everybody enjoys. Yep. And we'll let everybody else decide what they want to watch and not watch. Yeah. Which is pretty much the American way, too. We don't want to force our beliefs onto you, which I've always enjoyed until politics gets involved. At that point, it doesn't matter. I do find this very fascinating because I stumble around it because we've talked about the merits of both and the detriment of both. I definitely enjoy the the freedom of choice, but I also really appreciate the accountability here. Me and you are always on the same point in this. We always... we always uh, really appreciated Japanese culture oh, yeah. for what it means and really speaks to the heart of like who you are as a person, but totally also enjoy not pushing those beliefs on other people. Yeah, <laughs> for the most part. I'm not going to commit seppuku because I was an idiot 13-year-old and you know went to Target and did some awful things with my friends. <laughs> well, there's, I mean, but, there's, but there's still certain, you know, I guess, exceptions to that. Okay, you're a child. You don't know yet. You're learning. Well, and I. Sp- well, let's also remember what the Japanese believe to be a you know consent level. That's not. Yeah. Okay. We don't have to talk about that. Um, I do also think though, if you look at how that's translated to our personal lives, like personal accountability is something you and I take a lot of pride in. Yep. And the reason I'm excluding Mark here is because we just haven't known each other for as many years. Right. As far as I have seen you, yes, you take, make sure that you are accountable for your things. Except but, for drinks. But there have been, except for, yeah, <laughs> except for drink ingredients. Hence why we're having mojitos today. Um, Sorry. But, I mean, f- over the... I'm not complaining. Nearly 15 <laughs> I was say, these years. Are very good. 15 years now? Yep. Yeah, that we've known each other like that has been something that's very important to us. Is we've done things that we're all embarrassed of doing together. Yep, we have all had to experience I, it alone. And I have my own group of friends that are like that. I mean, everybody's got them, man. We got the the tight few that you'll do anything with and then regret it all together later. <laughs> <laughs> the kind of things where it comes up in conversation. Oh, remember that one time? Never mind. Yep, yep. yep. We'll talk about that later. Yep. Uh, we'll we'll, we'll right just up. never talk about it ever. <laughs> you know? yeah. but it's I, actually happening on the show more often than I like. <laughs> <laughs> I found this an interesting touchstone to like kind of go over, and I'm not sure if there's really any like conclusion to this conversation. No, it, it's it's one of those things that's like, you know, leave it up to you and definitely tell us how you feel about it. Do you feel like it was an overstep? Do you feel like we as Americans and our culture don't take it far enough? Um, or, you know, what do you, what level would you find acceptable for this crime in relation to business and how you would approach it if you want to? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Yes, I agree. Make sure you leave a comment somewhere on the page. In the description It'll below. be around there somewhere. No, 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 literally. Somewhere on the page. Again, you know, so Chrome glad Dev I don't Tools have to edit, edit this it. video. You know, replace Wherever the you want. replace the YouTube logo with like some really it, small it, comment that exactly. kind of thing. Take a screenshot of it and send it to us. Please, for the love of God, that'd be wonderful. Make sure you address Theodore Harrington Collins um, with the Yes, place. exactly. Tell ask how much you love him. Ask THC mm-hmm. here how much you know you, you you know would like to I guess, or I guess I could discuss it further with us. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll also have the Kotaku articles that mm-hmm. I have referenced in this conversation in All our, our description. All of our, our articles will be there, but specifically this is a little bit of a longer read. There's also a bunch of <clears throat> additive uh, articles you can find in the first one. You should check them all out cuz they're all fascinating. Yeah. So, absolutely. I think that leaves us with the last call. <gasps> last call. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here, as you know, because you've been here before. <laughs> Just kidding, new viewer. Uh, we have our shout-out portion of Last Call. Uh, there's not a whole lot to talk about here, except for PAX is this weekend. So as this lands on Friday, you should be seeing information coming from PAX oh, East. Week, next week. Uh, it's next weekend. Yep. I lied. It's next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Does it matter? When for the next the episode airs, you'll see it. Correct. Yep. Uh, that being said, there will be a couple people from the Strange Gaming Network that will be there. I know Xphobia is going himself. Yep. Uh, I'm still in debate. You're uh, still in I'm debate. Sure, yeah. We have a good buddy of ours. Collins will be Sean Collins. Yep. Going. Make sure you find him and call him an asshole. Uh, Dylan is going and Dylan, the old Crystal. podcast member who used to be here and died a long time ago. He, he did die. Ghost, he turned into he did THC. We, he, we'll bring this girl and have him walk around so that way you can be introduced. To him. But regardless, uh, make sure you shout us out on Twitter, YouTube's, what, however you can find us. Or if you want to say hey, come say hey. People will be there. Yeah. Feel free to uh, run up to them if you can't find them. Again, I'm sure Twitter's a great way to find Dylan likes being touched in the butt. And go ahead and just take a good Very squeeze. specific. Actually, Nipples. <laughs> Definitely yes. his nipples. Just go for his nipples. That Random bad boy. stranger. Find him on the street. Totally <laughs> not. Totally Make not sure sexual we'll be assault. Down below. Not not at sexual assault at all. This is a lot of fun. I'm really <laughs> mostly glad because we did I this. want somebody. I, and if you do it simultaneously, take a picture of him and his girlfriend that will be with him. I'll send you a T-shirt of It'd my choosing. <laughs> 
Are you done? Are yeah. you are you good? Okay. Uh, then moving on to our question of the week, John, handsome John over here, put into I read it. Relax. You did. Okay. I'm nope. gonna pick one. Uh, I was gonna go look at it because I forgot what I said. At random, uh, I think we're gonna go with your second question, which is, what movie did you want to be good so badly? That bombed the hardest, and I think I'm going to move this outside of movie and just media project. Yeah, media projects. That's so fine. like book, album. I say whatever movie because we tend to be movie people. Fair enough, but I mean games. Like it, we have better <clears throat> conversation about movies. Anyway. Fair enough. I'm going to go last. Of Don't course work. you will. He always likes to talk until he has nothing to say. Oh, I'm so thirsty. I need a drink. The rest of us. Oh yep, pretty much. It's out. <laughs> I drank the last of it. <laughs> That's got to be four, dude. There's some. No, there. there's still some left. Yeah. Uh, I'm also, I also plan on making some in the shaker when we're done and we have a little chit chat, chatty chat. Yeah. Um, I like. guess I'll go first since nobody else wants to talk. Else um, I'm trying, like, one of them specifically, and it, it it's not going to be the only wow. one that I'm going to talk about, but I'll bring it up first and then come back around for my final portion. It's going to be a movie, and it's Batman v Superman. Yes. In that movie, I wanted it to be good because the concept of Batman vs. Superman, A, is just so freaking fantastic. But B, it's Zack Snyder. Like, I'm a big fan of Zack Snyder when it comes to his iconic cinematography. Like, 300 is fantastic. I know the Watchmen movie had its problems, but that movie is not adaptable to film. What he did was a great effort. Like, I, the disaster scene that was, you know, like destroyed New York was yeah, amazing. Yeah, like all of that iconic cinematography was there. And there are sequences. The fight sequences are no, horrible. There are sequences no, in Batman v Superman that are great cinematography, like him falling down the well with the, the bat the rising. The tornado scene even. Yeah. Like, it, oh, God, like so there great. are spoiler alert, by the way. Parts of that movie that are so good. My, and, say, by far my favorite one, though, is, you know, Wonder Woman just coming out of nowhere. It's like. <sighs> Is she with you? I thought she was with you. Yeah, <laughs> it, with her, with her theme song playing in the background. Da, 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 da. Um, but there are like that movie's like ten percent gold and ninety percent hot, stinking garbage. Yep. The Martha scene? Are you kidding me? Oh, Martha! <laughs> Why'd you say that name? Why'd you say that name? Pretend, Martha. It's so dumb, and it just oh. killed such a great premise. I would have loved a genuine. Doomsday did not need to be in that movie. No. I love Wonder Woman, but she didn't need to be in that movie. Nope. Like, no, no, no. It, it literally could hype. have just been... Okay, so the, I, I get Doomsday being in that movie because he pits them against each other. I, no, I, no, because you could have just had Lex do it. Let Lex be the bad guy. Let that, like, that would have been just fine. Okay, all right. Yeah, I get that. Like the fact that Lex mysteriously knows who Batman and Superman are. Come on, get out of here! God, that irritated me. He's like, <laughs> but that, why, what was it? With no like actual lead up to it, he's just like, "Oh, I know who Bruce is." I'm like, oh, "Go fuck yourself, Lex." How about, how, about you, how about you shut up and we'll let, we'll find out how you figured it out. Oh, man, There's no sure. surprise that movie got a six point five to me. No, not at all. Not yeah. at all. Twenty seven on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, it's just that makes more sense. Oh, uh, makes me so sad because it, yeah. it had, it it was truly. The like, on Metacritic. what led, what it was the perfect, like, here's what the DC extended universe is going to look like. <laughs> You're like, cool, it's going to look like this. Mm -hmm. God, trash. Awful. Um, mine was actually a movie called Chronicle. Chronicle. Oh, 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 we're going to go to blows on this one, oh, really? son. I love Chronicle. No, uh, and the reason I say this is that I didn't dislike the movie, I wanted it to be a little bit better. How? Um, I felt like the graphics that they used were really, I felt like they could have done more like a Akita almost is where I felt like it was going, but they did it more in a group scenario, kind of like Power Rangers level. Like hey, we all got like powers at the same time, blah, blah, blah. Um, it was a movie that I really, I did enjoy, but it got a lot of flack. A lot of people didn't really care for it all that much and I feel bad about it, but I definitely want it just, there was something about it that just didn't give me the wow that. I expected from Akira because you it was supposed to be that wanted movie. a live action Akira. That's yeah. not what it was. It's, it, it's it, not what it, was. it pretty much is that. <laughs> it's not what it was. Um, I wanted it to be that, <laughs> um, but I, I and you know a similar movie that makes me feel that way is um, I am number four. Yeah. Um, oh God. Oh, I, I enjoyed that. movie. I enjoyed it too. I did. In that Australia, there's a chick, lot of questions that involve in that. I had. To, I watched that movie actually. Uh, Teresa Palmer at college. Name. They have a movie theater at the college, little auditorium thing. Actually, it was that girl freaking. 
got me all hot. I was like, dude, that girl is freaking on point. I, I got to leave Woo. the theater. I got to leave right now. I'm just going to Good thing it's dark up. in this room. Yeah, and whacking people's heads as I was scooting by the... Uh, <laughs> His hand. Thanks for that image. Yeah, I'm just trying to push him out of the way. The, um, That's what this paint is. But, you know, those two movies definitely remind me of, like, the... Kind of like almost like the teen movie that just got real ruined by them trying to make it PG thirteen. They should have like went for the more the rated R level quality. I think the brutality would have made it a little bit more better for our age group. Yeah, more better, uh, more, more better, more better, more better, more Ra- money, more rather, how. Well, as opposed to um, that's good old Mo would say. <laughs> oh no, what was I thinking? Going Twilight esque with it. Yeah, where exactly. It could have been so much more gruesome. It should have been like you know like serious like sex scenes. You know. <laughs> With wolves and vampires. What is wrong? What? Are, I wolf, hated that movie. So did, you obviously didn't watch it. Wolves don't have sex with vampires in that movie. No, they don't. They should though. That would have made the movie better. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, Marky Mark, what's your contribution to life? Liberty in the pursuit of he happiness. edits your stupid barrel rolls. People must get freaking <laughs> knots just watching this shit. Teresa Palmer. Oh my god, I love you. <laughs> I don't know if you actually um, Okay, so I, I've already talked about this one before Okay um, Jack Reacher 2 Ah, uh, yes, yes The infamous Reacher 2 <laughs> Jack Reacher was such an amazing film Reacher 2 had so much So much it could have done And it just didn't It is sad You were talking about how disappointed you were in that movie And like how much potential it had It did Okay, have you guys seen Jack Reacher at all? No, we had this discussion, and I haven't watched it yet. (sighs) Okay, I need to to. give you access to my uh, specific account that you can watch them. Is it on Amazon? Because I think it's on Amazon. No, 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 it's sitting on the server. Oh, I can do that too. That's fine. Yeah, that works for me. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, no, no, no. Uh, So it's just, there was so much it could have done, and so much let down I got from it. Because the first one, I still go back and watch, but I still have not watched the second one more than twice. Wow. See, a lot of sequels have that that curse. Uh, very few movies don't. Uh, Indiana Jones being one of them. Um, I enjoyed, I think, the third Indiana Jones movie the most out of all of them. Last Crusade, baby. Yeah. I mean, it's just, dude, I mean. Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Suck it, Trebek. <laughs> <laughs> Poor the, Trebek. Yeah. That's, a, that's an oldie but a goodie. Yep. The, um... The movie, uh, oh, so for uh, an- another point for Chronicle was it was like Akita because that kid went freaking AWOL and they had to try to control him. Just because there's a like crazy kid with powers to, does not okay? mean that it's Akita. They also had powers, remember? That was the distinct. This is the only distinction. And they didn't and have. The like, Akita had a giant freaking laser gun. They didn't have future techno stuff. They just had powers. They could float around. The techno right. stuff. Like techno stuff, like technology. Okay. Like he fuses literally with technology at one point in time. Yeah, I know it gets real weird. Yeah, I can does nothing is creepy. Wonderfully bizarre. Watch that movie in the dark with the freaking teddy bear and the milk stuff. Oh my god. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Akira, not Chronicle. Yeah. Um Yeah, Jack Reacher too. All right. Well, we're gonna watch Jack Reacher and then we'll watch yep. Jack. We should do movie nights. I don't know why we don't. Oh, oh I know. Oh, we're I'm freaking busy adults. Eh, that's true. We are busy adults. But you we'll gotta finish up with your personal life on the weekends, and then we can have movie nights. All right. Fair enough. Enough. He's uh, more time restricted than we are on the weekends. So I know. You gotta let us know. I was gonna add one more, and that was gonna be Oceans Eight because Ooh, oh, I yeah. okay. you gave me so much crap for hating no, 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 on no, no, it. Hold on, hold on, because I like that movie a lot. Yeah, I like that movie a lot. You're gonna get all the female flack down in the comments. I, yep. I, I don't understand why I like that movie a lot. Because I think the, the whole point of it is the women's movement, just like Ghostbusters. Listen, I never saw the Ghostbusters one. I can't talk to that. Oceans Eight is a great <laughs> beginning. To that, if they're doing a trilogy franchise where this is going to emulate the other three films, it's a great start off. It's no Ocean's Eleven. It's so, not even so Ocean's Twelve. They're going to do nine, ten. I think it'd be great. The fact that it doesn't even relate to Ocean's Twelve at all on a scale of goodness is tells you it's a bad movie. I think. Well, I've I've definitely grown more partial to Ocean's Twelve as I've gotten older because I hated Ocean's Twelve when I first saw it. Yeah. I can tell you right now, I like Ocean's Eight more than my original impressions of Ocean's Twelve. <laughs> I think Ocean's Twelve is a little bit more hokey than than it Ocean's really, Eleven. It really, it just there's it's that movie. The problem is the good, great, greatness of Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. 
got just overshadowed it's, it's, everything. It's, it's got it, sequel syndrome. Well, yeah, the level of like know how and like the things that you could have figured out on your own if you would have truly been paying attention, right, right. wasn't there. Like it wasn't Ocean's and, Eleven, and that's a little bit how I felt about eight as well. I think the biggest thing about 12 is that they changed the style to match that of a European film. Like it's supposed to emulate that pacing and everything else like that, which totally go, it conflicts pretty harshly with your typical American heist movie, which is what 11 was and what 13 becomes. Yeah. Okay, and so yeah. because of that, it, it feels like it's constantly fighting with itself for what it needs to be. Okay. Um, but eight, I think is a great foundation. The problem is with that movie, it references the old stuff too much. Like oh. I, I, this is a spoiler. If you care at all about oceans eight, I'm going to give you like 10 seconds while I vamp here and just continue to talk to myself because I like hearing my voice and it's a lot of fun. It's true. I actually have trouble breathing sometimes because I talk so much. There's a reason why we're quiet over here. You're gone. Okay. So, uh, this for the table first, on the back end for, by him alone. for the first 30 movies or 30 minutes of the movie and for the last like 30 seconds, it does nothing but reference Danny Ocean. Like everybody constantly comes up to Sandra Bullock's character. Like, oh, I'm sorry to hear about your brother. Yeah. Is he dead? Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe. And you're like, cool. So that means Danny's coming back in the middle of the movie and then he never appears. And it gets to the very end and she makes a little martini in his grave. She's like, you would have loved it. And I was like, you know what would have been great? If you had wow. left out that first 30 minutes about people asking about fucking Danny and she had just gone to the very end, made the martini gun, you would have loved it. And you could have slow cut to Danny Ocean. It would have been fucking incredible. Like, what a great sequence. Oh, dude. I, I, hands down. Yeah. That would have been amazing. But they didn't want to pay for that. Instead, they're <laughs> like, oh, we're just going to mention him over and over again but he's never gonna appear in the film i'm like it totally it's a giant tease that didn't need to be there it killed the pacing of the movie because it kept taking my attention away from who sandra bullock she's this new character i'm actually kind of interested i like sandra bullock as an actor oh well where's george clooney oh, okay we're left that again okay cool so sandra bullock she's doing some stuff oh where's george clooney oh okay so we're coming back to her again like for the first 30 minutes of the movie it's an hour in like 48 <laughs> minutes yeah like, come on. Yeah, they, they wasted a lot of time, and I feel like they, they, again, pushed the women agenda a little hard, which I feel like they could have done strongly with that cast without having to feel like they pushed it. I didn't. Right. I personally did not feel like they pushed you it. You watch it, and you let me know. You're yeah. going to be the tiebreaker, because uh, I've had people say what I said, people say what he says, and I get it. I can see where both sides come so from. By, by the same token? Okay, so every, everyone, the, the general consensus is that the new Ghostbusters movie has not been great because, it, not because it... Uh, Honestly, because they pick pick the wrong actresses for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not necessarily because of the women's movement and that it was you know like off kilter from you know like uh, okay it was off like they weren't pushing an agenda. Ghostbusters, right? It was more of the cast. But right, exactly. It, it was more because everything that they did was just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Um, who uh, like the the popular girl who plays um, uh, everything? Something McCarthy. I know you're talking oh, about. Well, yeah. uh, so Jen her, McCarthy. Jen McCarthy. But then uh, the girl from uh, Saturday Night Live. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. I don't know her name. Tina I, Fey? I, no, 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 not Tina Fey. The uh, blonde one, right? No, she's brunette. You're talking about Kristen Wiig. That's it, yes, yeah. Kristen Wiig. Um, but they just get a little ridiculous in it the entire time. Yeah. And it just pushes the, McCarthy like, way. the comedy over the top. And, 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 that, and that's the problem. Yeah, I, I, McCarthy, dude, she loves but to I, steal the fucking spotlight. But it's I'm gonna, crazy. Uh, exactly. But I'm going to say watch the movie. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am. I have been curious. It's not like I've. You watch Ocean's Eight. We'll watch Ghostbusters. Yeah, too. absolutely. Oh. Or Ghostbusters three. three. Ghostbusters twenty sixteen. Yep. Um, yeah. I so think actually that that one flopped so much. Apparently they uh, they're talking about coming out with another one with bringing the original cast. They are in twenty twenty. It's already kind. Oh, Kate, man, Kate McKinnon is who I thought you were talking about. Who is that woman right there? Um, Which one? The blonde right there. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Let me see. No, 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 no. Except yeah. for Kristen Wiig. Kate McKinnon. Um, hey, girl. I have, I actually do want to watch wow. this movie because I'm very curious about it, but I have. totally had something to say, and I completely forgot it. It's gone. Speaking of forgetting. I don't know where it's going with that. That's the end of Thank the show. You. Thank you so much for joining us this week. <laughs> Apparently we uh, drank too much. Please, <laughs> let, not even. I just, just my brain just smoked shut this, down. <laughs> shut down. Let us know what uh, media product. Oh, I was going to say my... Other one was just Don't Make Cry 2 because it sucked. Uh, it should have been better. <laughs> tell us For video game wise, absolutely. Tell yeah. us above in the comments, and we will Below. see you next week. Cheers! Clank, 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 clank.